What's up, everybody? This is the VSM Real Estate Podcast, getting you closer to massively successful players in the Twin Cities real estate market. Uh, I'm your host, Andre Anderson. Today, joined by, again, Jamie Smith. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you today? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. How have you been yeah. recently? I've been great. I've been great. A lot of good things happening. Yeah. Uh, both in the real estate world and uh, uh, in the outside of my real estate world. So everything's all good. Can't yeah. complain. Everything's on full cylinders. Everything's that's, running. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, that's it's, good. It's projecting the right way. Is it the right way? Yeah. yeah. Trending in the right yeah. direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So probably good closings and uh, working with some buyers and, and sellers and everything right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the market is great. Um, had an opportunity to work with some great uh, both buyers and sellers and investors uh, over the past couple of months. Uh, summer's in full swing. With That's the, true. Uh, with the summer market. Uh, weather's been a little up and down, but you know. Yeah, even in this office right now, it's kind of. It is. It's a little bit of a sauna. It, but, it's a little yeah. warm here, so if we start sweating profusely, it's. Please forgive us. Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. It's not our own. Just yeah. roll with it. It's not yeah. not stage fright or anything like that. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Getting no, the guys, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I know you have uh, some listings and in, in open houses going on, um, or that are available for open houses, um, and you know, taking buyers through that or like getting new buyers. Um, I think is is always a good strategy. Um, so you know when you you're meeting a lot of people, I know you kind of wanted to talk a, a bit about um, what the process is for buying a home as a first time home buyer and what people should be aware of. So uh, when you're meeting new people, maybe at open houses or for the first kind of you know meeting, um, can you kind of walk us through the process of what you usually share with people? Of course, from like a high level. Of, so people can kind of understand if they're interested in in purchasing a home, being yeah. a first-time home buyer. Right. No, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because it has come up quite a bit um, uh, in the last couple of months with um, the recent interest rates dropped, uh, dropping, and um, with uh, uh, the rents, you know, being being high as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are are seeing the value in um, purchasing versus um, versus leasing. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question has come up quite a bit recently. Um, I, I want to buy. I'm thinking about buying. What does it take to buy mm-hmm. uh, to buy my first home? So uh, it's a very relevant topic, and um, I think a lot of people can value for or take some value uh, from from this subject. So I, I kind of broke it down into a five step process that I tell people, mm-hmm. and I'll give the Cliff Notes version of it, just with some quick bullet points, and then obviously. Um, you know, if you want more uh, information or if you're serious. And the details. Yeah, yeah, if you're serious about the details and about taking the next step and seeing um, what it takes and if you are uh, able to purchase your, your next home, um, you can reach out to me and, and I can certainly walk you through the whole process. But uh, essentially what I tell people, uh, the first thing you need to start with um, is to get pre-approved. Um, the, the money part is, is the, by, the, by, the by far the most important part of the process. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a couple hundred grand sitting around in cash, right? For sure. Uh, most of us, myself included, need a loan. We need a mortgage mm-hmm. um, to purchase that home. So it does you no good. Uh, it's fun to look on, you know, those those third party sites and look at homes that are, you know, three, four, five, a million dollars. Yeah. Right. But um, I do every every now and then, of course. Exactly. It's fun, <laughs> it and, is, and yeah. we all do it, right? We all like to like to dream. We look at this one. Um, but if you're if it, a better use of your time would be to see what's in your budget, what's in your price range, um, what are you comfortable spending on a monthly basis, and then look at homes that are in within your range. Right. Um, because we see it all too often. I'll, t- I'll talk to somebody, and they're in the very beginning stages, or just thinking about purchasing their own home. Show me all these houses. Exactly. And they found a couple and it's like, well, you know, uh, this is a great home, but unfortunately it's a thousand dollars out of your monthly payment budget. Yeah. So, um, we, we might need to kind of reset those expectations. Yeah. Um, so I always, oh, I always liken it to, uh, going grocery shopping without your wallet if you're not pre-approved or you don't know where your limits are, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. So like, that's always, that always gets the point across to a lot of people. And it's like, a, let's go. And it like, is. It's a good analogy. And, you know, uh, many people think maybe it's a big step or a big commitment um, or there's a, there's a cost associated with getting pre-approved. Pre- pre- approved, mm-hmm. And um, that, is, that is not the case. Uh, most lenders will do it for free. Mm-hmm. Um, there's usually no commitment uh, to do so. And nowadays with, 
you know, the mobile apps and so forth. Yeah, Rocket Mortgage and all those yeah, others. Yeah, right. I work with I work with a couple of lenders, and the pre-approval process is very quick. You can you can Five do it. Five or fifteen minutes, or exactly. It's crazy. You, yeah, you spend fifteen minutes on your phone, which um, I learned earlier today in a social media class. Most people spend at least sixteen to twenty-five minutes um, per uh, login on Facebook. So it's and it's. it's just fits perfectly. <laughs> it fits perfectly, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you spend 15, 20 minutes on a, on a mobile app site. Um, you can get pre-approved and at least have a general idea of um, what your, you know, what you're going to look like or what your, your pre-approval amount is going to look like. Mm-hmm. And you can get started from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that, with the pre-approval, and I'm not a lender, um, but I do work with a lot of great lenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the lenders I work with, uh, Drew Messner with uh, Mor- uh, Movement Mortgage, mm-hmm. uh, gave me some quick tips that he uh, passes on to, to clients, and I'll just share a few of them. But mm-hmm. uh, there's three parts to a pre-approval, uh, the pre- a mortgage pre-approval. Uh, the first part is your credit. You need to check your credit um, to see where you're at. Um, that brings up a lot of questions. Uh, this isn't. I won't get into credit worthiness right here. That's mm-hmm. for um, somebody who has a lot more uh, knowledge in that field. But just generally, um, you need to have at least a 620 credit score, and that's your median, your middle credit score. So mm-hmm. the way lenders look at it is uh, there's three different uh, credit bureaus that report. A lot of times when folks go to the you know credit karma or whatever. Uh, sometimes they'll, give you, one. they'll give you one, yeah. right? Uh, so lenders, they'll look at your three. They'll throw out your high and your low. They'll take the middle one. Mm-hmm. So for an example, uh, if I have a credit score at uh, 620, I have another one at 650, and I have another one at 680, they're going to throw out the 20 and the, and the 80, mm-hmm. and they're going to keep the 650. That is your credit score. Mm. That's your mean credit score. So that's how that works. Um, that's for conventional. Uh, if you don't have a 620, don't worry. There's still alternatives. There's yeah. still alternatives. There yeah. is an FHA uh, mortgage program out there. Um, it's a uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a program that is um, insured by the federal government, mm-hmm. and that requires a 580 minimum credit score. Um, so you still can get approved for a mortgage if you're at a 580. If you're below a 580, uh, it's okay. We've got you've got some work to do, but it's not impossible. But these are things we need to figure out very early on, uh, because it does take time to especially with credit. Yeah. Yes, to yeah. fix to fix credit, um, whether it's something in your past, whether it's a judgment, um, a, a late, or something that's on there mistakenly, we can get it taken care of. Just need some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second part to the pre-approval is um, you need to have a down payment. Okay, most of the time the down payment is at least three, three and a half percent, depending on the loan product. Mm-hmm. So that's three or three and a half percent of the sales price. Yep. So if you are purchasing a two hundred and two hundred thousand dollar home, uh three percent of that is six thousand um, dollars. that's three percent. That would be your down payment in that instance. And that would be for FHA loan. Conventional can be they they have like five percent. Ten uh, percent usually. Well, if if, if, if you're over seven hundred, um, I believe it's seven twenty. Don't quote me on that. But if you're over, if you're in the low seven hundreds or above for conventional, you can go as low as three percent down. Oh wow, yeah, three percent down. Yeah. FHA. Um, now that, remember, yeah. FHA has the lower cr- minimum credit score. So right. if your credit score is a little lower, you can go as low as three and a half percent down for an FHA loan. Yep. So there's some some variances there. Uh, the third part to the credit pre or to the pre-approval process is the DTI, which stands for your debt to income ratio. Okay, um, so what that means is that they take they look at your total monthly debt versus your total monthly income, and that cannot be I think it's above 54, um, and that's for I believe that's for conventional. Um, Hang on a second. I've I got think it FHA down here. is like 56 or something. Um, like that? No, that's yeah, for FHA. For FHA, it's, it's, up, it's as up as 50, as high as 54. Excuse okay. me. And then for conventional, which has the higher minimum credit um, um, credit score, that's 49. percent mm-hmm. Okay. So you can't have a ton of debt. You know, there's right. an old saying: if you make a million dollars and you spend a million dollars, you're broke. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you you've got to get your debt in check um, compared to your compared to your debt. Um, so once you have those are the three components that uh, that go into a credit pre or to a pre approval for a mortgage, um, and those things will spit out a number. If you are approved, it'll spit out what you're approved for. Mm-hmm. Now that may or may not be 
what you want to buy. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You might be approved because you've got great credit and you've got low debt and good income. You might be approved for a million dollar loan. Right. You might say, well, Jamie, I don't want to spend a million dollars. I don't want my payment to be $10,000 a month. Right. I want my payment to be $1,500 a month. Okay. So with that, then we can work backwards with the lender and figure out what purchase price is going to get you to a $1,500 a month payment, including your um, you know, taxes, insurance, principal, and interest. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's the first step. Um, the second step, once we've got that and we've got kind of the dollars and the cents and the finances taken care of, or at least a snapshot, um, is the timing. Okay? That's the second most important question, uh, or I'd say frequent question that people ask is, when do I start looking? When do I go, go get pre-approved? Um, how, when do I put a, put my notice in for mm-hmm. my, for my for current lease? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And um, th- th- there's, no, um, th- there's no 100% answer to that, mm-hmm. right? There are a lot of variables mm-hmm. within the home buying process and the cycle. Yep. Uh, but what, what I tend to do with my clients is I have them work backwards. So typical closing from the time we secure a property, have an accepted contract on it, to the time we close and you can move into that property is typically 30 to 60 days. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's typical, that's average. So um, if it takes us 30 to 60 days to, once we have a property, you know, um, uh, found and then close, it it takes us about 30 in this market, maybe 90 days to actually locate a property that you'd like mm-hmm. and get that accepted contract on there. Mm-hmm. And um, even if you do have an accepted offer, sometimes things exactly fall apart. So exactly. you might find it on, you know, the first like 22 days, get it locked down, but then right. something happens in the inspection or, exactly. you know, something like that, then you have right. to keep doing the search. So Right. You're a lot, a lot of moving parts. But I tell people, hey, give yourself at least a good 60 days to locate a property and secure that property under contract. Uh, the, right now we're finding um, with the, the uh, decrease of the low inventory, um, houses sell very quickly. Yep. Um, they go on multiple offers. Uh, so you might not get the first property that you make an offer on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just the reality of the, of the, uh, the market today. So, you know, if we take that 30 to 60 days to, um, from contract to close, and then we add, you know, another 30 to maybe 90 days um, to locate a property during our search, you're looking at 60 to 120 days. So that's about two to four months from the time you start looking to the time you move in, mm-hmm. okay, with two months being on the, the quick end, yeah. right? That's, you're, you're lucky, all the pieces fall into place for you. Right. Everything goes your way. You find the, you know, you, you know exactly what you're searching for, what you're looking for. Yep. You find mm-hmm. it right away. First offer accepted. You yeah. make a yeah. You have a great agent who negotiates, you know, the contract for you and gets it accepted like on the first Smith. try, you know, yeah. and um, and and you move right in, right? Um, so give yourself some time, and, and that doesn't that timeline doesn't include any time uh, if you need to save for a down payment. Let's say you, you come to me and I say, hey, you need three percent down of two hundred thousand dollars. That's six grand. You say, hey, it's going to take a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then you have to, you know, add that on. you have to add yeah. some time or a credit. Uh, like you can't get pre-approved yet, and you have to right. get the credit score. Sometimes that can take, you know, right. um, like a month if it's like really aggressive, or maybe six months to, you know, even exactly. a year at that at that point too. So, exactly, yeah. Let's let's say you, we we pull your credit, and um, you're like, oh shoot, I forgot about that uh, Sprint cell phone bill that uh, I never paid off. Yep. Uh, I got to pay that off first, and you might need a little bit of time to pay that off, mm-hmm. and for that to reflect accurately on your credit report. Yep. Okay. So that would add time on there, but generally, I just tell people, hey, sixty to nine, sixty to one hundred and twenty days from the time we start looking um, to the time that you can move in, mm-hmm. generally speaking, um, on average. Okay. So if you're looking at when to put in your notice uh, at your current lease. Don't come to me a month before, right? <laughs> say, we need to find a spot, right? Real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and that's happened, and we've made it work. But it's it's high intensity, right? It, you're it, always putting yourself in a bad position. Exactly. Your your uh, the de- the demand is so there that you're willing to 
you know, right. negotiate away or all exactly. that kind of stuff because yeah. of your position, yeah. Or or you might feel like you need to settle because or you're, settle, you're yeah. against a tight time frame. It just adds to the stresses. So yep. this, is a, this is a situation where you can control this variable, the timing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say come to me a, a good six months. Mm-hmm. Come to me a good six, six, five, six months before your lease ends or before your target move date. Typically, that gives us enough time to make any adjustments on the credit, um, you know, save for down payment. Or get a, um, receive a gift and then have everything go with the bank exactly. smoothly that, with that, too, to exactly. show to the lender, hey, right. this isn't my drug money. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, like exactly. It, it didn't just poof. Exactly. <laughs> lenders bank. lenders yeah. don't like drug dealers, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't work very good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'd say a good five or six months before you're looking to move, um, reach out to me. We can get the process started. It's never too early mm-hmm. um, to, to start to mm-hmm. start uh, to start the process. Um, the third step uh, I, I tell folks is create a list of needs versus wants. Mm, yes. Uh, and this is important um, if you're a single buyer, meaning you're buying by yourself. However, if you're in a situation where you are buying with another person, um, a roommate, a spouse. Uh, somebody else who's going to be living with you, mm-hmm. uh, this is imperative. Right, yeah. This is imperative because, you know, if you know, Andre and I are buying together, he wants, you know, a set of things, and if my list I want, like, three garage stalls. Right. And then you want the pool. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Something like that. If our yeah. lists are totally different and there's no <laughs> intersection, um, it's going to make for a lot of, uh, disagreement mm. when we're searching for houses, mm-hmm. which just adds to the time, adds to the frustration. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. So I would say that is a must um, uh, at this point. Uh, at my role as a realtor sometimes turn in, turns into a counselor. Oh yeah, <laughs> because we'll get into the house and you know some issue uh, pops up. Yes, yeah, some <laughs> issue pops up, and one of the buyers says, "Well, this is exactly what I wanted," and the other person says, uh, "You know, but I wanted something else." Yep. So it's a very it, it is a it's, it's a very it's a big decision. It uh, can be a stressful decision, um, and most of us are not very good at making decisions, especially mm-hmm. big decisions, yep. and especially quickly mm-hmm. in a market where you go look at it today. If you wait until tomorrow, it could have five offers on it. Mm-hmm. So uh, having this list ahead of time uh, before you start looking just makes it a breeze. It it, it just, helps. Yeah. It gives you something to refer back on, and then check. Check, check. Oh, right. this one didn't. Yes, and it, and it helps to ease some of the anxiety of making that decision and actually pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you an example. I had a, a, a couple that were looking. Um, we did this exercise. We went out the first day, found a house that was perfect, mm-hmm. right? What do the buyers say? Well, it feels quick. This is the first, you know, we've went out and we've only looked at five or six places. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, well... A couple of things are true about that, and a couple of things aren't true. Most people, I'd say about 90% of the buyers, start their search where? Online. Online. Mm-hmm. So they've already looked at probably dozens, if, if not, not more, hundreds. if yeah. not hundreds of homes yeah. online before yeah. we went out and actually you know, stepped foot through a door. Um, so they have looked at more houses than that. Um, and secondly, the house that we found met all of their criteria. Mm-hmm. They were just having a little buyer anxiety mm-hmm. because it's such a big decision. Right. It, now it is, so. we did all this prep work, right? We did step one, step two. Now we went and looked at some houses. It's coming time to pull the trigger. And it's real. And it's it's making it real. Yeah. So having that checklist and we can go back and say, Okay, you said you wanted, you know, two bedrooms and, you know, a law store a loft or a den mm-hmm. has that. Two car garage has, has that. You know, fenced yard for your dog. It has mm-hmm. that. So it literally had all of their wants and a couple of their needs, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yep. What are we waiting for? Mm-hmm. This this is it. it, it and and I see it, we see it all the time. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years. What happens when the buyers don't pull the trigger and say, nope, my, my parents told me I need to look at 50 houses before I make a decision. <laughs> okay. Well, what happens is we go on day one. We see the perfect house. It checks all their boxes, meets all their criteria. They love it. There's nothing wrong with the house. But they need to just look at more houses. We lose that house. And now, it's the standard. And it's the standard. Now we spend the next two months trying to find a replacement 
for that house that we lost. And they're always comparing it to that house. And they're always comparing it yep. to their house. Happen, right. It happens a lot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So um, I, I, I say that and I give you that example just to, to let people know having that list is important. It seems like a mundane thing. And, oh, I'll just walk in and I'll know. You might know. Your partner, you guys have to be on the same page mm-hmm. so you both can can agree i'd say i'd say you both need to make a list of three to five wants and a list of three to five need or, mm-hmm. i'm sorry a three to five well uh need, need. to haves and three to three, three to five want to have excuse me mm-hmm. and then intersect so you need to agree on three um needs mm-hmm. so those are things like hey i got it's us and we have two kids we need three bedrooms okay that's a, that's a need mm-hmm. um uh, a nice to have or a want to have would be an um, additional office or something like right. that or you yes. know, something that has a huge backyard so you could put in swing sets and yeah, or, you know exactly. a pole barn or whatever yeah exactly exactly um large closets you know uh, those are some those are people place those on a higher pedestal mm-hmm. um but i'm reminded especially my first time home buyers this is not the house that you're going to die in mm-hmm. right this is the plan based on the the conversation that you have um that you're going to stay in for you know, three, five, maybe seven years. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be perfect, right? So let's 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 get the needs taken care of, and then have maybe a couple of the wants, but the next house, right? Your big house, your dream house, your mm-hmm. house that you're going to raise your family in, mm-hmm. uh, retire in. You know, those home that that that's the house that can have more of the needs, mm-hmm. the granite countertops and so forth. Mm-hmm. But your first sure. house. Um, you know, depending on your budget, right. it may not have all those things. And not only that, but even if it doesn't right now, it doesn't mean that you can't update it, you know, over time while you live there to mm-hmm. to meet those wants and, or, you know, like the granite countertops and uh, the the bells and whistles and, and everything like that, right? So, exactly. Yep. Exactly. So um, the wants and needs is huge. Uh, I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse, but that that's huge. It's a huge step. Mm-hmm. Um, just taking a few minutes to just decide on a few things have some overlap so when it comes time to make that decision you can have that to refer back on and alleviate a little bit of the anxiety of making the decision Mm -hmm. to move forward okay um and uh let's see the fourth step so we got five we're almost there the fourth step uh is i've got um uh kind of just a a list of 10 do's and don'ts Mm. Um, that I share with with uh, with my buyers, and I got this um, from one of my lenders, Drew, uh, and it's very helpful because it just has a quick it's a quick cheat sheet of things that we didn't necessarily cover, uh, but things that you need to be aware of. Uh, so the first one is don't open any new credit of any kind. Credit lines, yeah, right. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't. But don't I want that it. boat too. To right. Go, to go next to yes. my waterfront property. You right. Know? Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Um, keep all existing credit cards open mm-hmm. um, because what that does is it increases your available credit, mm-hmm. which helps your credit score, right? Yep. Um, don't max out or overcharge existing credit cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the the standard there is, what, 30%? 30% of your available credit. You need to be using 30% or less of your available credit in order for it to not report or um to kick it high or to kick the credit score lower right because right. of available credit impact yes. yeah so it doesn't uh, affect you adversely uh the fourth is keep your employment within the same company or field of work mm. um generally speaking for us as 1099 self-employed folks you have to have at least two years we yeah. need two years of tax returns in that business mm-hmm. so if you just left your corporate job and you're full-time in real estate for instance yep. and you have one year of tax returns not you're gonna cut not it. going to qualify for a mortgage. Mm-hmm. Um, you need two years if you are 1099. If you are W-2, you need one year um, of work history mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> in the same field. So that means, let's say you are a you're a nurse and you transfer from one hospital to another hospital or another field, but you're still a nurse. Mm-hmm. That still counts. So that that doesn't break. The um, like the chain of employment. And, correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, don't consolidate debt to one or two credit cards. Oh, okay. interesting. Yeah, because you don't want to you don't want to max out that thirty percent. Oh, true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, do not uh, do pay off collections, judgments, or tax liens reported within the past year. Mm. 
that's a big one. It's going to be very hard to secure a mortgage uh, with judgments or collections. Right. Yeah. For so sure. if you have those, and most of the time you know you have those, mm-hmm. make payments to pay or make um, make uh, arrangements. Right. To pay those off. Yeah. Because uh, lenders don't like those, don't like those at all. <laughs> and you shouldn't either. You know, yeah, as you a should, buyer, you should definitely not like should, those. Yeah. yeah. And I know sometimes, you know, oh, it's, it's Sprint, and you know, whatever it was from when I was in college. Right. Yeah. Guess what? It's coming back. A Twenty-nine dollar bill that you it's, forgot to pay. It's yeah. coming back to yeah. haunt you. you. Yeah. You're gonna have to pay that off. Exactly. Yeah. Um, do be prepared to pay off collections if if required by underwriting or the loan program guidelines. Uh, do provide any documentation for satisfied judgments or paid tax liens. So if you have paid something off, keep that documentation. Uh, a lot of times we can take that and make sure that the credit bureaus have adjusted appropriately. Mm-hmm. Uh, do stay current on all payments for all existing monthly obligations. So the general rule of thumb is no 30-day um, lates. Mm-hmm. No 30-day lates in the last year. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Lates are um, they're weighted more heavily the more recent they are. Mm. So if you were 30 days late on your credit card last month, it's going to take a big hit on your credit versus if you were late 30 days late um, 13 months ago, mm-hmm. it's almost non-existent. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right. It, it pretty much falls off. Uh, I mean, it'll still be in your credit. Right, it's but, a negative impact, so right. you can't just let it sit there right. and fester. Ex- right, exactly. <laughs> but the the longer it's removed, and the the kind of the standard is twelve months. Yep. Um, you want those lates at least. Well, you don't want any lates. Period. Yeah, exactly. But um, as far as a mortgage pre-approval goes, we want those to be at least twelve months or more removed mm-hmm. um, from current. Um, so we went through a lot. Yeah, that's kind of a lot, especially you know if it's all new to you. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the biggest thing that I, I tell folks is uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, uh, very high level um, as far as all of these different uh, different steps go. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is call a realtor. That's right. Uh, via some real estate. That's it. I think we're full of realtors. That's it. We've <laughs> right. got a few here. Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking about, the moral of the story is, is if you're thinking about purchasing a home, there are some steps to take. Um, a, a good realtor will guide you through this. This is our job. For sure. Um, and most people think, well, well, some people think, well, I don't want to commit to, to a realtor, right? I'm not ready to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, realtors are your tour guides through this process. Mm-hmm. It's our job to educate um, you know, our clients through the process, get them connected to any vendors, whether it be a lender, a credit repair person, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, once we get down the line, it could be a title person, mm-hmm. an inspector, insurance, uh, insurance, yep. right? It, it, we're the glue uh, that holds everything together when you're looking at buying or selling a property. Mm-hmm. Um, so reach out to, to agents. Yeah. Um, if uh, people want to reach out to you, how would they? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. Of course. Um, there's a few ways you can reach out to me. One uh, is you can uh, go to my website, it's jamieesmith.com. Uh, you can send me an email. Jamie at VSM uh, real estate dot com mm-hmm. uh, or you can give me a call six five one two two six one zero two four. Can we get the the number just the number, yeah. yeah. Can I put it like right right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so really we, we do it all for you and um the great thing about Minnesota real estate law is that the laws are written so you get as a buyer, you get buyer representation for free. For free? For free. That's zero ninety nine. Oh my God! Yeah. Free ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's free ninety nine. And the reason they did that is because um, it wasn't always like that. Um, back in the day, you had to call the agent whose name was on the sign. Okay. Sure. Well, a little here's a little buyer. Here's a little agency um, one hundred and one for mm-hmm. for all you folks looking to to do something in real estate, looking to buy or sell. So. Um, the, the the name on the sign, that agent is representing the seller. And usually the seller only until right. you contact them. Yes. So you can call that, that name on the sign, or you can look on Zillow and con- push the contact, reach out to that agent. That agent, more than likely, is, being, is hired and being paid, and their allegiance is to the seller. Now, there is a thing called dual agency where they can represent both sides. However, their allegiance is to the seller, right? Seller pays all the commissions. So uh, 
people said, you know what, that's really not fair. That would be like me going to court and having this same lawyer, legal representation, as Purple. the other side. Yep. Right? It can be done, but it's... it's you just have to really understand, uh, especially as a first-time home buyer, you usually right. want someone that's more at bat rather than uh, obligated to be very mutually... Right. Uh, and, like, involved mutually and very limiting to what can and can't be said and can exactly. and can't be done. So Exactly. Yeah. And therein lies the advent of buyer agency. Exactly. Um, so, great segue, by the way. Yeah. So, buyer agency was created and said, okay, uh, brokers, listing brokers, have to cooperate if they put things on the MLS. So, if a house is listed on the MLS, they are, that's a contract to cooperate with other brokers. Mm-hmm. And when that listing agent puts the house on the market, they make an agreement with the seller to pay a total commission and then the listing agent says, if another agent brings a buyer, I will split my commission with that buyer's agent. Mm-hmm. So there's no extra cost. There's no extra fee. It's already agreed upon at the time of listing. Mm-hmm. So when that house is put on the market, well, before that house is put on the market, it's already agreed upon. Mm-hmm. Therefore, buyers can get their own rep- representation. So going back to that courtroom example, you have your own counsel, right? In real estate terms, you have your own agent who is allegiance are to you and you only as a buyer. Our job is to look out for your best interests um, as a buyer. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire transaction. Throughout the entire transaction, and it costs you nothing because the seller is paying. Mm-hmm. And why would they? Why would they do such a thing? Because their listing agent is one person. There are you know, 10,000 other agents in the metro area. Yeah. So it's to their best interest to offer compensation for another agent to come and bring a buyer to sell their home. It's just more market exposure. So. More market exposure, mm-hmm. exactly. So uh, for those of you who are thinking about buying, get a buyer's agent. It costs you no commission. Mm-hmm. The seller pays the commission. And for that no commission, you get somebody to walk you through. The entire process. The entire process. Yep. Be your advocate. Look out for your best interests and okay. go to bat for you. And connect you with all the people that you need to be on your team. Exactly. So Exactly. Yeah. And I can do that for you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, man, for joining this time. I know we have a lot more topics that we want to get to uh, throughout the weeks and whatnot, but this was definitely a great topic um, for a lot of people, especially if um, even if they're looking to um, – purchase like for investment property their first time or you know what does that look like too um this is just really good good um high level um very building that foundation for people that are looking into buying a home so yeah thank you so much for joining yeah you know what that's a good next topic is first time investing that's true yeah and sometimes they're the same they are yeah that was for me (laughs) absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. we'll we'll, we'll come back and talk about that yeah thanks for having me yeah for sure well thank you everybody for joining uh tune in next time